prepared yet. You need to try and pick off the units as well. Look at the shields on the Mark Oh my god, the bow is gonna take them! Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Tasteless. With me is Artosis. That's me. That's him. Woo! We are from the GSL at GOMTV.net, but enough about that. Now to this game. This is the IPL game number two. We already saw a pretty epic game number one. Over here, we have Nurcio in the far right spot. In the far left spot, we have Mana. You know, this is such an important series, Tasteless. We're going to see Mana's absolute best coming out of him. He cannot go down 0-2 against such a strong foe as Nurcio. Ooh, I Don't see you what know? you did there. So, oh, they are in cross spots, so the Overlord will know right away that, okay, he's not uh, in that bottom starting location. And if you notice how much stuff is in the water on this map, there's a lot there's of actually... Well, well Battlecruiser's in there, but that only makes sense because there's also a shark down there, and obviously a shark beats a Battlecruiser. And there's also a Protoss Carrier in there. A lot of stuff has crashed here. Yeah, it's, uh, there's there's dangerous uh, jet streams just over that part of the water, Tasteless. How about that? Yeah. All right, here comes the probe scouting. <laughs> the StarCraft meteorologist, Tasteless. <laughs> the probe scouts around. It does look like our Zerg player is also going to send out a drone here. This is not for a hatchery. It's too early for that to be the case. He does like his uh, 14 hatches in ZVT, but this, of course, ZVP, probably not going to see that. Hatch first can be very dangerous against a smart Protoss. Look at that shape, Artosis. What shape is that, Tasis? Is it a pentagon? It's a pentagon. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's one of my favorite like colors, and this along with circle. This here underneath the Overlord is a circle, yes. <laughs> well... We see a uh, one gas going up, and we'll have to see what build Mana does. You know, one to three gateway expansions with sentries are the most common against Zerg. Of course, the one gateway ones, they're pretty risky, pretty greedy, but we'll see what Mana will do. This guy in the past has shown greed, but also has shown a lot of safety, so a very versatile player in that way, and this drone is one of the greedy ones, Tasis. I think he's going down. Yep. There he is. He made him chase his tail a little bit too many times. They're spinning around in circles. You know what he, he was... says as he dies there, Tasteless? What? Now I know what a mineral feels like. <laughs> I think I'd be like, this is it? I guess my entire life was to stop a cybernetic score. I don't know, man. I think it's a pretty bad deal. It's a pretty terrible deal, Tasteless, but... Ah, uh, what are you going to do? You know, know uh, Nurcio is a cruel master indeed. And we got the Cybernetic score finishing. Now let's see where he's going to take us this game. The Protoss is still with so many different options as far as what they can do. Yes, quite true, Tasteless. You know, we can see things like Void Rays quickly. We can see uh, DT rushes. Uh, not normally a Robo-Off one base. If we see a Robo-Off one base, then I'm going to be pretty surprised. That's not something that happens. But that's... But... that's... I, we don't. We, people just don't do that. You just don't do that, no, Artos. Tasteless. It's like not wearing how it's white done. shoes after Labor Day. Yeah, you, you don't just want to, don't. Oh, heaven forbid. Yeah, that, you don't want to be caught like that, Tasteless. You'd be the laughing stock of the neighborhood. Of course. Well, we have a stalker oh. popping out, uh, and a All right, Twilight, Twilight Council. Council. You know, the stalker is something we see a lot nowadays. It used to always mean either four gator tech, but nowadays people do it even with sentry expands to make the Zerg think four gator tech. Yeah, the stalker is still very versatile, and of course, you know, when you have that stalker, there's still so many different options for the Protoss as far as what they want to do. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a, I, I love these openers off one base. Yeah. Now with that Twilight Council going up and how much gas he has, it definitely looks to me like a DT rush. And DT rushes can be very nice. I mean, if a Zerg gets too greedy and wants to do something like a Roach Zergling aggression, uh, you're gonna actually just get almost a free win uh, if they. If they rush to layer, you might be in trouble. Anything aside from a rush for, to layer, though, this is a strong opening. Yeah, it looks like the Zerg is hopping up the ramp. Oh my oh, god! Oh my god, he, he knows. I can't believe that got in, and neither can Mana. You know that he's shaking his head. His face is red. It's all he has this guy's caught. fault. Oh, that he's is fire. A, that's a terrible Zealot, Tasteless. And now Mana has to decide, well, 
I'll probably keep that, you know, keep the Dark Templar building. The Dark Templar Tower, as I oftentimes call it. Uh, <laughs> but how many DTs will he make? I think we're going to see one. Yeah, I think if he makes any more than that, I mean, you're investing so much in something that's basically uh, kind of anchored in the element of surprise, and he doesn't have that right now. No, he has no surprise whatsoever. Yeah, I would say no more than one. You could even say don't make any, but honestly, just having one out in the map is pretty good. Yeah, you're going to force at least one overseer, probably two, certainly a spore crawler, and uh, forcing anything can always be nice. And look at this, he's checking to see if the Dark Shrine is still being made. Very nice by Nurcio. He's trying to sneak in there, and he, he sees knows. it. That's exactly what he's looking for, Tasteless. He saw it. Two Dark Templars do get warped in, but that Overlord was completely worth it. Now he knows, okay, two D there's going to be at least some DTs on the map. I All have right. to make some detection. Here they go now, cleaning up the Zergling at the only Zelnaga Watchtower on this map. But I think right now uh, our Zerg is too well defended. Well, well there's the Overseer. There's, there's the Overseer. Yep. And that is going to make him, as you said, too well defended for the moment. Uh, Spire going up. You know what? This is really funny. Zerg players, when they see uh, Quick Twilight Council, love, 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 love to go Spire. Yeah, I think it's a great counter actually to it. I know a lot of people, a lot of people might say, but aren't Blink Stalkers like yeah. good against Mutas? Well, they can be, but here's the problem: is that they can't leave their base if you have too many Mutas. And they get stuck in this very specific unit combination. Mm -hmm. uh, Zergling and Mutalisk is so good against this. That is that is some true words, Tasteless. And true. of course, you can use all these spine crawlers that we see he's making to stop any non-Colossus tech from moving in on you too Yeah, quick. exactly. So it's, it's a good build. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty strong overall. And we see he is getting the plus one and probably get his gas pretty quick. Nurcio getting ready to take an additional base back there. It's smart to just clear it out. Whether you want that as your third, your fourth, or even your fifth base. Let's get that out of the way while nothing important's happening. Uh, no, there are some stalkers put in the back there. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but that is uh, pretty good uh, just to kind of hide the sheer number of units that you have or kind of what you're going for, especially in a game where Zerks basically have been uh, one step ahead every step of the way because he's managed to get that intel. Very true, Tasis. Eight mutas being created, the robotics facility being warped in. Uh, of course, he's going to need that because if you walk around without any observers, you are just asking to be unburrowed upon. Yeah, absolutely. And burrow with a uh, you know this uh, uh, opener is actually something that's pretty good for Zerg. Yeah. Uh, against a, a, something like this, what the Protoss is trying to do uh, with the Blink Stalkers and the Dark Templars, you yeah. some people skip Robo. When no, they that's do that. that's very true, Tasis. I mean, you already have overseers, you already have mutas. Why not just target down observers if they come out? Yeah. You know, it's. You're going to have to make probably quite a few if the Zerg really does his job correctly during his harasses. Okay, the third base is almost up and running. And from there, it's going to be up to the Protoss to either take another base of his own or come out and attack. It's right here coming uh -oh. the Mutas. We don't have cannons here. Yeah, man. Where's all his use? Oh, they're in the middle of the map. They're blinking back as quickly as they can, Tasteless. But as you said, they can't leave the base when Mutas are out. And Mana's going to have to blink up here going to lose a good amount of probes. In the meantime, he's just used his blink, so he's not even going to catch any mutas, unless Nurcio gets really greedy, which looks like he was a little bit. So he will lose probably two mutas at the end of the day. And oh my god, just barely. Wow, I can't two. believe that. You know, you can always, I believe, fly right over here. Yeah, You're sometimes you can hide up there. Too. You have to be very yeah, careful. Yeah, it's so hard. Yeah, man, if you shoot down, then suddenly your mutas are all dead. It's kind of scary. It's kind of risky. I'm not the type of guy, Tasteless. You're a safe guy. You wear a seatbelt when you're on your Segway. You wear your helmet. <laughs> That's right. I, I strap myself in very, very well. And people ask me, what if your Segway flips over? You're trapped in it. It's on fire. No, it's a Segway. That's stupid. That would never happen. <laughs> That's a no. You know, the guy who invented the Segway died on a Segway. Yeah, it's, it's actually this really sad, it's ironic it's joke. Yeah, it's like your death is a terrible, ironic joke because it's so bad. Um, so, uh, Probes now taking a ton of hits here from these Mulisks. Yeah, getting a lot of kills off those two photo cans. Not really doing a lot. The Stalker's trying to come down and get something done. And it looks like these Mutas will be chased off. But they're doing great damage. And if we look at the supply, 119 to 89. Random Archon in the middle of the map. <laughs> but uh, Nurcio is taking a fourth base. He's got a very nice number of drones at 60 against just 38 Probes after killing so many. 
And he's got 17 meters against 18 stalkers. Also, a lot of lings out there. So, Nurchio has to be feeling really, really strong at this point, especially with that many spine crawlers. Well, it looks like Protoss is moving out now. Um, he does have some defense, but it's pretty minimal. Um, and I just don't know if this is going to work. It seems uh. like a counterattack. Like any, any Zerg player in the right mind would just go for a counterattack here. And I think that's what we're going to see. You know, a lot of Protoss players, Stasis, are a little bit afraid of Mutalist style play, and they just try to hit these two base timings, where they're like, well, this is going to be really hard to kill, but realistically, without any Psy Storm or Phoenixes, it's going to be pretty hard to stop, and the counterattack uh -oh. is occurring. Wow, a lot of Zerglings coming in here as well, and oh no, Mana is in a lot of trouble, man. Well, you know, he has a lot of Stalkers and Cannons, but it's just not enough. Look, I, I don't know if Mana's strategy would have been different uh, had the Zerg not spotted it, but uh, I do think that, uh, actually, no, let me, let me rephrase that. This game would be completely different. Now, Protoss is a counterattacking over here. Oh, but it, it, just, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. It's too bad that Mana's, what I was trying to say earlier, it's too bad that Mana's strategy was given away, but I don't know if this game would have had a different outcome. Well played there uh, by Nerchio. He deserved that win. GG. Let's go on to game number three.